Good morning to all. And um, indeed, welcome, Reen. We have had a number of um, greetings, so forgive me as I do repeat them, um, being the first official speaker. So, Mrs. Beverly Khan, Deputy Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Planning and Development. Ms. Rosemary Lal, Program Officer, Energy, Environment and Disaster Risk Management of the United Nations Development Program. Mr. Dr. Roshan Parasram, Member of the Board of Directors of the Environmental Management Authority. Mr. Hayden Romano, Managing Director of the EMA. Ms. Toilan Anu, Acting Director of the Institute of Marine Affairs, Ms. Nadia Nanan, Senior Environmental Education Officer at the EMA. Even more distinguished guests, staff of the EMA, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good morning again. So, as you would have heard, today represents the flagship event for the Global Environmental Protection Caucus, World Environment D. This is the universal platform for bringing environmental issues to the fore, stimulating corrective action through advocacy, legislative measures, public awareness, and most importantly, positive and impactful activities. It celebrates nature's prestige whilst challenging the human race to develop more efficient modes of utilizing its resources, especially today as we are at an unprecedented burgeoning world population of 7.5 billion. Now that was an estimate at 2017, so it's probably 7.6 by now. This significant day was designated by the United Nations General Assembly in 1972. And it was done at the Stockholm Conference on the Human Environment, stemming since then from a very worrying concern for the human environment. Two years later, in 1974, the world would witness its first World Environment Day commemoration with a team then only one Earth. And let's see how many years that is. We still are only one Earth, right? Even though we have made some discoveries in out of space, it's still only one habitable Earth, which has even given greater relevance today as we contend with increased human increased environmental burdens arising from this burgeoning global world population. So much competition for resources, you know, which are very finite. So today we at the EMA are proud to host this commemorative event because it's, it coincides with our 22nd anniversary. And this was not by chance because this date was deliberately chosen 22 years ago to launch what today has become known as the Environmental Management Authority. And I stress with that because um, at the time, it was thought that it should be the Environmental Protection Agency. But I think better sense prevailed because we realized that with population and, and competing needs, you needed to really manage the environment and recognize that that is the way that you have to go if you want to protect the environment. So it's management for protection. So therefore, our actions today and every day must be exemplary. That is the EMA and you and lead the way in responsible management of the country's environment. And today, as I stand here, I think we have gone from environmental protection to recognizing the dimensions, various dimensions that make up environmental management, development, human health, and the environment, those linkages. 
So since, in, since inception, we have developed a comprehensive environmental management portfolio as guided by the Principal Act, which is the Environmental Management Act. And through that, you saw the establishment of key pieces of legislation to discuss, to address critical issues, to designate environmentally sensitive species and areas, extensive collaborations with regional governments, and notable environmental entities, environmental NGOs across Trinidad and Tobago, and the academic community. And I'll recognize, um, even though they probably don't think that I know them, I'll recognize the UTT here, University of Trinidad and Tobago, one such academic community. Our public awareness efforts continue to grow and evolve to meet the new trends in communication driving today's modern society. But is this enough, we ask? As a maturing entity, and I use that word maturing um, very deliberately because the EMA has just gone through a strategic um, exercise and on a scale of one to five, the EMA 22 years later was still found to be at the maturing stage, not yet matured. So, given, giving it a score of three. So, as a maturing entity, we do recognize that we have much more to accomplish. This year, the EMA is engaged with the Ministry, in Ministry of Planning and Development, that is, in revising the National Environmental Policy, which was last revised in 2006. And through our public consultations, we recognize that our population is demanding more. More from the EMA and more from all of the state agencies tasked with environmental protection duties. The findings of the 2016 Environmental Literacy Survey, which will be presented to you sometime at, um, at the, I think, coming to almost the end of the program, will reveal those opportunities there are for increased public awareness drives. We have heeded this, these indicators and our 2017-2021 strategic plan seeks to intensify our operations across all sectors, thus optimizing our output. Our new vision mandates, and I had learned this off, but I'll have to check my text now, our new vision mandates that we become stewards of our country's natural resources and the environment, meeting current and future human, ecological, and economic needs. Um, and the new board has, in fact, indicated that we should have this mantra up where staff can see it, we can see it, and remind ourselves that this is what a matured EME should be that's our vision on a related note in recognizing other initiatives to protect the environment the institute of marine affairs recently launched its state of the marine environment report i think it was just about two weeks ago three weeks two yeah and while there are areas of concern the findings will serve as a baseline to monitor trends and track progress in addressing these concerns. So ladies and gentlemen, the road ahead for the EMA is a challenging task, but no challenge is unsurmountable. We as the EMA are committed to provide the sustainability guidelines, drive stakeholder collaborations as we would have done for the national um, environmental policy encourage citizen science and that's that's something that has picked up in the world everywhere this concept of citizen science and we do see that there are many um, groups and persons out there who are doing indeed just that and increase sensitization on our limited resources all as precursors to promote conservation actions from each and every one of us i therefore make a plea to you in keeping with this year's theme connecting people to nature, to show love and respect for the environment in tangible ways. Not just, you know, um, we mount it, but we must act it as well. 
This year's theme has inspired us to create avenues to reconnect people to our natural environment. Our open house, which is now officially open to the public downstairs, which I hope all of you would visit when we are done, sought to transform a physical space into an institute for learning and fostering an appreciation of our biodiversity. Because there's a downstairs, um, while it's, it's general in terms of environment, there's a focus on Trinidad and Tobago's very, very precious biodiversity. Our valued partners, both from the state and NGOs, will present insightful, interactive displays on biodiversity and the work of their respective organizations in protecting our resources, including our friends from Tobago. Am I right? Yeah? Amrita? I wish to congratulate all our partners and urge you to continue with your outstanding contributions towards environmental conservation. Another note worthy feature of our celebrations includes a social media contest whereby the public was invited to submit their photos depicting this year's World Environment Day team connecting to nature. To date, we have received over 130 submissions from nature enthusiasts. And I invite you to view these photos at our open house. Ladies and gentlemen, we at the EMA celebrate the tenets of World Environment Day every day. And I urge you to take back something positive from this commemoration to your respective ministries, state agencies, other workplaces, even your homes. And let us collectively transform our attitudes towards our priceless natural assets. At this juncture, I would ask each of you, I'm going to pause when I finish ask you the question, give you half a minute. I'd ask each of you to recall your own special experience with nature and reflect on how it changed your actions towards the environment. I'm going to pause that one special moment. Okay. I recall mine, and I think I'll share it. I have, I have two, actually. But my first was, as a university student, going to Matura and seeing this huge creature, and I have to say, clambering out of the sea, nesting, coming out to nest on Matura's beach. You guess what it is, right? Leatherback turtle. And I, I wonder, no, David wasn't with uh, me then. That was while I was still at the university. And I was amazed that Trinidad and Tobago actually had such a creature. And I use the word creature because that's your first, you know, what is this thing you're stumbling over? And today, Trinidad and Tobago host the second largest population of leatherback turtles in the Western Hemisphere. We really don't appreciate how, how important the small country of Trinidad um, is in terms of saving a global population of leatherback turtles. My second was on the way to Fig Walk, that is in Matura again, walking for miles and miles and miles and on, along a river bank and seeing on one of these lianas, the vines that come down, a red howler monkey with a young on its back. And I think those are images that never go away from you. At those days, you know, we didn't have a cell phone to take it out and so on. But it's etched in your memory. And I think that, in fact, changes your perception at the time of how you treat with the environment. So I'm not giving the feature speech. I am really supposed to only be given opening remarks. But... I thought that was important, you know, World Environment Day, and it's important. Uh, when we hear the literacy survey, we re recognize the importance of public education and awareness and sensitization. So, as you have begun to think in your mind about your moment, I want to end with these inspirational words by our search. Now, um... I read it and I thought it was so appropriate. Every child is born a naturalist. 
Their eyes are by nature open to the glories of the stars, the beauty of the flowers, and the mystery of life. May we today reawaken the childlike sense of wonder, admiration, and enthusiasm that resides in all of us. I thank you very much.